Hello, welcome to another episode of Closing Deals in Heels. Today we have a very special guest and I feel like so many times in business we forget to work on ourselves, we forget to um, have balance in our life and this woman is absolutely incredible. Not only is she a mom of two, but she's also um, created I think three different podcasts at this point, has her own TED Talk, um, absolutely incredible at everything that she does. And the one thing that I really liked about her when I found her on her podcast was that she actually cares so much about other people, about them getting results, about them understanding themselves, about her spreading the knowledge that she's learned, you know, over the years. So I want to welcome you, Sonia. So nice to meet you. Thank you so much for being here. Could you introduce yourself? Just give us you know, anything that I missed that would be so important for any woman that is listening right now? Oh, thanks so much. What a beautiful introduction. I'm really excited to be here. Uh, so I have spent really the last 23 years as an entrepreneur, a business owner. I have, you know, coached just about in every format possible. I started coaching before that was even a thing. And so I've been, you know, coaching businesses and business owners and leaders and individuals um, right now, I'm currently doing a lot of somatic coaching for leaders and professionals. I also do corporate training and speaking, which I love. I I specialize in emotional intelligence. And so that's really fun to talk about in corporations. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've got, yeah, I've done three podcasts over the years. So I've been podcasting, I guess, about seven years now. So, you know, it's I love it. It's really fun. And yeah, happy to be here. Uh, I'm really, really happy to have you. I, I really love that you do somatic work. I learned that you did that this morning. And I was telling you a little bit before we got started, um, somatic work has helped me so much in um, my personal life and business. And I think that's really beautiful that you're bringing that into the corporate space and helping people understand like Western medicine versus Eastern medicine and how you can like somatically get things out of your body. Could you give anyone that doesn't really understand what that is just kind of like an insight on that and why you're so passionate about, you know, what you do? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, somatic is really just about the body, right? So, you know, it's a mind body approach to coaching that I particularly do. There's somatic therapists, there's somatic coaches, um, there's somatic body workers. But it's really bringing in more of the body because you know, so often take coaching, for example, so often we focus on trying to shift our mindset, right? Trying to shift our mind, our behaviors, our actions. And we're not really looking at how some of these unconscious patterns are manifested in our body, right? So then we don't permanently change a lot of our behaviors. We don't permanently change our actions or we feel like we're sabotaging ourselves. So all of that is really, you know, in understanding how the mind and body operate. And one of the things I love to talk about and teach about and work with as well is the nervous system, right? So you know, so much of what we're doing is having stress responses, especially in today's world. We haven't really learned how to regulate our nervous systems. And so, you know, we're operating kind of in that fight, flight or appease. And we're, you know, we're, we're running on that all the time. And so we're, it's exhausting and it's causing us problems in the, in the life we have. A lot of some of the behaviors and actions we have are no longer aligned with the values that we have now. They really helped us survive as children or survive as adults. But now we, we want something different for ourselves. And so it just takes that ability to be able to work with the mind and body, to be able to work with the conscious and the unconscious self to make some permanent and long lasting changes. Yeah, absolutely. And normally what I typically see is that when somebody is like really passionate about their work and they've done a lot of work themselves, right, are now at a place where they're giving, typically it's because, you know, normally they've been through a lot in their life or like something happened, you know, to where they're like, man, like this is my destiny. That's what I'm supposed to do. Did you have a moment like that or, or what drew you to wanting to learn this, wanting to teach this, you know, to be able to help others? Yeah. I mean, it was something I had at a very young age. Like, I think when I was about six, I started to be really interested in sort of my internal world. I started journaling at that age. Uh, at nine, I read my first self-development book, which I always laugh because it was called um, Solitude. Like, you know, it's all about embracing solitude. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just something I was always interested in. I wanted to understand how people worked. I often would sit and have conversations with adults as a child. And so that sort of psychology and the behavior and all of that was something I was just really, really interested in. But yes, it has also been a ton 
ton of personal work, right? Really, you can't do this work unless you've done the personal work, right? Because you have to be able to regulate your own nervous system. You have to have worked through trauma. If you haven't worked through any of your stuff, it'd be really difficult to work with other people's stuff. And so, you know, I had a, a challenging childhood. I had a lot of different trauma experiences in both my childhood and teenage and adult years. And so, yeah, it's been a lot of personal work. Um, I'd say, you know, some of the biggest shifts were like, like in my 20s, I often talk about how my whole life burned to the ground, which is a very long story. But, um, okay. you know, you know, I basically, my my partner at the time, my first husband, he became very addicted to drugs. Uh, we were we were navigating that. And, you know, in so, so many ways, my life kind of burned to the ground within two weeks and I had to start off with nothing. I was a single parent all of a sudden. I was having to navigate no home, no income, all of these different things that happened. And so I'd say that that was a very, very important catalyst for me to start to really look at, you know, what what is happening, even though I have all these great intentions, I have all this work I've done already up to this point, it was in my early 20s, you know, how do I really shift some of the behaviors that have led me into these experiences or, you know, have brought me to this point? Uh, and that was when I really started to dig into all of this. And I've spent, you know, quite many years since then <laughs> doing um, that work. Well, you said something really important, though. You said that you started to change behaviors of like what led me to this point, which is like taking like radical responsibility, you know, for your world. And I know that sometimes it's so hard because situations are completely out of your control. Um, you know, I, I also had a, a, a husband that was, you know, an alcoholic and all this other stuff and, you know, found myself in a position where I had to figure it out too. And I think that so many years I was so angry, right? I'm like, well, this is not fair. Why did this happen to me? You know, and it's not like my fault, but it's definitely my problem, you know? And so, you know, you doing that, like set a pathway, not only for your life, but for your kids, right? And showing them what's possible for them. Like, what have they noticed? Because I know I want to go into like how you were teaching cells and, and learning business and all this stuff. But like from being in early 20s, you know, to... And being a single mom, like being in a situation where you had to figure it out to being at a point where you were teaching other people, like, what do you feel like the big, um, like, aha moment was for you? Or like, where did you feel like you had to put your head down and start doing the work? Like, where was that? And what did you start focusing on? Wow. I mean, it's just been so many different points, I think, you know, in terms of me always being very committed to my own personal growth, right? Like that's that's what it is. It's like this commitment to my personal growth. So like you said, it's it is is radical responsibility to look at how did I wind up in this situation that is beyond my control? And yet what choices did I make that brought me here? What other choices could I have made? What did I want to learn? What can I learn? Right. So these are all really big, I think, moments when we kind of wake up to the situation that we're in and we're like, how did we get here? And how can we shift what we've chosen in the past and choose something different? And so for me, definitely that time period was probably the hardest time period in my life, the the most the, the experience that rocked me the most, you know, even though I'd had a lot of situations I couldn't control as a child, this one, I was an adult. I had, I made these conscious choices, you know, and so it was really good to kind of, um, I don't know, take that level of responsibility and understand that, yes, I'm not responsible for other people's choices, but I am responsible for my own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like um, so many times in life, like, things can seem overwhelming and like they're so far ahead. And if we can just take one step at a time and makes us feel like we we are progressing, right? Like that one at a time. Where was like that peak in your career where you felt like, hey, like I'm doing stuff. I made it. I know that you, you know, taught sales for a long time, talked to big corporations, like from where that moment was where you felt like, oh my gosh, like this is one of the worst moments of my life. Yeah, I had to fix all this. And then what was the like the other moment where you're like, oh, my God, like, look what I did. I know you were on a TED talk. Like, do you feel like you've had that moment where you're like, oh, my God, look up where I've come and what was that moment? 
Yeah. I mean, I feel like I have these little like, you know, chapters, right? And so there's like these different chapters into which I feel like, wow, okay, I've gotten somewhere. And, you know, after my first, you know, sort of losing everything and divorcing my first husband and going through that whole process, you know, I ended up moving to Austin, Texas. This was like back in 2006. Um, I, you know, had my coaching business, but I started a work-life balance and co-working space. We actually started the first co-working space. And, you know, when I first moved to Austin, I knew nobody. I literally was just a single mom, didn't have any clue what I was going to do. And I built a really amazing community. I, I knew thousands of people by the end of that process before I moved to Australia to be with my husband, which was a new chapter. And so, you know, that I think there was this moment where I really recognized, wow, I literally built things from nothing. And I did that with my strength and my determination. And if I can do that, anyone can do that. And so that was a definitely a really pivotal point for me. Mm. There's something that happens when you like identify with yourself of to being able to do something. You're like, I trust that I can build something from scratch because I've done it time and time again. Which makes more sense now because you do so many things, which I, I absolutely love. I know you have three different podcasts. Can you kind of go over like what those podcasts are, like how you created them, why why additional ones? Like I'm sure you love it, which is why you're doing multiple. Um, and like what else you've been able to create since then of knowing that you can create stuff from scratch? Yeah, like it's definitely, I mean, I'm one for understanding that security and strength is really built from the inside, right? In knowing, like, I'm confident that no matter what I hit in my life, I can overcome it and achieve it, you know, and I think that's a really important internal personal development that, you know, is great for all business owners and all of us, right? It's not what happens outside, it's what happens inside. In 23 years, I've pivoted a lot, right, in business to stay successful, um, I the three podcasts. I mean, I started off with Women in the Business Arena, which is my longest running podcast. And, you know, it was amazing. It was me and my co-host. She's a somatic therapist. And so together we were really able to like unpack all that really cool internal stuff that we deal with in business. We talked about sales. We talked about marketing, but we talked a lot about the psychology. And so I ran that for about six years. Uh, during that time, I wanted to try something else. So I started The Feminine Lens, uh, which was just a one season podcast. So, you know, we just we wanted to to talk about something a little bit different. We wanted to pivot a little bit in the way the content that we provided. And so that was The Feminine Lens. And then last year, I started Reclaiming Ourselves, which so far we've done one season. We'll do we'll launch another season later this year. But, you know, it's really more personal development focus. So, you know, one of the things I'm really big about is that innately we are all powerful, right? Internally, we already have everything we need. We are worthy. We are beautiful. We are amazing. We have strengths. We have gifts. And so a lot of the process of personal growth is not about becoming more. It's actually about taking away the things that are in the way of our greatness that we already have. And so reclaiming ourselves is really about that. I absolutely love, absolutely love what you were doing. Um, I, I work with a lot of women um, <laughs> and uh, we work with them mostly in sales, right? And the one thing that I was noticing that was really difficult is that we were teaching all these sales skills and this was like back in like October and a lot of my clients are starting getting all these results and then all of a sudden they stopped. And I was like, what is going on? And there was so much like unworthiness issues. I'm not enough. Oh no, am I going to be able to do it again? Oh no, maybe this was just a fluke. Oh my gosh. It just like all this deep rooted stuff that was like so deep and sub on a, like a subconscious level because it was so deep rooted that we, I was like, I don't know what we're going to do. And um, accidentally on a call, we had a girl, she had a breakdown and um, I'm trained in like trauma intervention and stuff and like breakthrough work, kind of like Tony Robbins. And so we're doing breakthrough work with them. And um, and now we do that every week. But I feel like it's so true. It's like no matter who you are, everyone has their own stuff. The shadow work is never, ever over, even if you've done so much work. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, and I feel like it's so frustrating sometimes, especially if you've done a lot of work, like I know better, but I'm still self-sabotaging in this area. Um, how do you see this affecting women in business? Right. Because I know that you're you talk about this and you're interacting with other women. Like, where do you see women finding themselves like not 
or like having to do more work in a certain area when it comes to business, when it comes to sales, when it comes to being in a work environment, like where do you see it affecting them mostly? I think the I think the unworthiness thing, I think you tapped that right, you know, right on the head, right? That is the key because and and part of it is systemic, right? Like I often work at this sort of intersection between personal growth and systemic change because systemically as women, we are taught to be less. We are taught to be unworthy. We're taught to appease. We're taught to to bow down. Like it is like inwoven in so many systems that it's impossible for it not to be somewhere in our psychology. So we have that to navigate. We have intergenerational trauma to navigate, right? So all the things that was carried from our moms and our grandmothers and, you know, all the series of women that have been in our lives, you know, and in our DNA, we're carrying some of those burdens and traumas as well. So, you know, there is this this sort of feeling of unworthiness. And I I think the other thing that I teach a lot about and talk a lot about and unravel a lot in my coaching is the way that we're functioning in our stress responses. So a lot of women, their sort of go-to stress response is the appeased response, right? We, we're taught that to stay safe, we have to meet others' needs, right? And that's really challenging to do when you're running a business. Because if you're trying to meet everyone's needs, you're going to exhaust yourself, right? Yes, we want to meet the needs of our clients. We want to have like balance and boundaries. We want to we want to serve them well, but not overserve them, right? So there's a there's a lot of that that happens. But when we feel unworthy, what it, what ends up happening is a lot of our identity is about over functioning, over serving, over you know achieving, and that really gets in the way of balance. And eventually, we're either going to burn out or we're going to sabotage ourselves, or we're going to stop ourselves from being really great because we're afraid of what that might look like or what that might take. Absolutely. I think the unworthiness conversation, even for myself, like I know, like I've done so much work around it, but like that was always the biggest thing in my head of always feeling like, like it was ingrained in me that I would have to prove myself in order to be loved or that I would have to be talented in order to be loved, like even at a young age. So I feel still sometimes affects me you know, even today and I have to check myself. I'm like, why am I doing this? Or why am I thinking like this? You know, um, do you have like tactical tools that you give like, you know, um, I don't know, like your, your audience or anything where like if they ever feel, because I have a few things that I do, but I'm just curious if you do anything. Mm. Ever feel like in a moment where like you're at work or let's say that you're at home and you just feel like just like overwhelmed, frustrated, like you know that you're like in a funk how do you get out of it or how do you tell others to get out of it? Yeah, I think it's having like a set of tools in your toolbox because really what's happening when we're feeling those things is our nervous system is becoming dysregulated, right? Mm-hmm. So, so something unconscious is activated and we're feeling activated and that can show up as frustration or fear or shame or freezing or fighting or appeasing, right? So it looks very different depending on who you are. But it's really a sign that, you know, our nervous system has become dysregulated. And so there's some really simple tools and practices. I mean, I teach all my clients practices to help them regulate their system. And, you know, some practices work well for people and some practices don't. So there's no one size fits all. I usually give people a set of tools to try out and to see which one works for them. But probably two of my favorite things are, you know, one is called interoception and one is called exteroception. And so interoception is like the just the practice and the ability to notice sensations inside of you. Right. So like, you know, notice how you notice your breathing. Right. As you're breathing in and out, notice the sensation of that. Notice how your chest expands or contracts. Right. Just that ability to sort of notice sensations or, you know, maybe it's like, oh, notice the sensations in your legs. Does it feel do they feel heavy? Do they feel numb? Do you not feel anything? Right. Just that sense of noticing things begins to regulate your nervous system. So it's, you know, it's something you can do while you're in session, while you're talking to someone on a sales call, right? Like, because oftentimes when we're on a sales call, as an example, we get dysregulated systems. And, you know, one of the interesting things that I that I find just so fascinating about sales in particular is when our nervous system is dysregulated, we will dysregulate other people's nervous system. And when other people's nervous systems are dysregulated, our nervous system will get dysregulated. They're they're set up to talk to each other. 
And so if we can learn to regulate our nervous system, even say within a sales call, then our prospects and potential clients, they will also regulate their nervous system. They will co-regulate with us, which is a really powerful tool. So I love interoception, which is the the sort of noticing internally. But there's also exteroception, which is sometimes easier for other people if they don't have as much ex- experience kind of feeling internally. And that's like noticing something outside of you, right? So it might be like I could take this, you know, bottle that I'm drinking and I could notice that it's glass. I can notice that it's hard. I can notice the shape. I can touch something and feel the texture, right? These are really simple practices, but they they both help regulate our nervous system. Yeah, and it's a very feminine practice to do as well, to be present for nothing to matter except for right now here in this moment. Um, and I'm very much with you in terms of being on a sales call. Like I feel like sometimes on a sales call, like you're throwing something that you were not expecting. And then all of a sudden you're thinking like, oh, what do I say next? Or, oh, how do I overcome this? And then you're all in your head and you forget to be there in the call. But I think that's really interesting that you getting all weird in your head could possibly make the person across from you also, Mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, like uh, theirs, right? So it's really interesting, um, like perspective to think about that, right? Like, hey, your self-control can allow them to like drop and feel safe as well. Um, You talked earlier to me about teaching women in sales, like we were talking about a feminine perspective, like. What was your you know, biggest takeaway when you started doing that? Because the reason why I didn't mind was I found that there were so many sales trainings and all the stuff that I did, but it was all made like by guys. Um, <laughs> and I'm like, they don't understand me. Like there's times the month where I don't feel like doing anything or my emotions all over the place or like sometimes life does affect me at work and they're trying to produce, produce, produce all the time. And I'm like, I don't feel like I'm wired that way. What was your perspective on that? You know, can you just give us a little bit of insight? Yeah, I mean, you said it to me as well. Like, the we're not wired in the same way, right? And same for me. I noticed that sales, even the sales, I did a lot of sales programs over the years, right? 23 years. I was in a lot of masculine-dominated programs. I was a lot of, you know, brother culture <laughs> programs, <laughs> right? And what I found is there was this very lacking understanding of women, of how we operate, of how we're wired, of what we're navigating internally, which is very different than what men navigate internally. Men have trauma and they navigate their psychology as well, but it looks very, very different. And so I found there wasn't anything out there. I mean, this was here. This was like, I don't know, probably 12 years ago, you know, and so I started to create, you know, sales processes and sales instructions of like, how can we operate in a more feminine way? How can we be more aligned with our values? And that's a question I ask people a lot when they're struggling with their sales is, are they in alignment with their own values or are they in alignment with someone else's values? And I think a lot of the things we're taught, they, they're they not necessary. And, and this is one of the things, like my sales process was definitely very different because it wasn't about closing. It was about finding the right fit, right? I turn people down all the time from my programs. If I don't feel like I'm the right fit for them, I tell them straight up. I don't even offer them an option to, to work with me because it's not ethical. And so, you know, being able to to find a way that works for us. I mean, for me as well, I was very um, empathic and introverted. And those things made it like I can't go, go, go. Right. And if I'm emotional, I'm emotional. I mean, sometimes I cry in a sales call. Right. When I'm hearing what people are going through, what they're what they're experiencing and those emotions connect with people. I mean, I was I know from my own sales calls. Like I was a very good, you know, closer, although I don't like that word, right? Like I pretty much would get 90% of the, of the, you know, calls and convert them into sales. But it was because I was genuine. I was connected. I was there for them. It wasn't about, you know, selling. It wasn't about selling at any cost. And so I think it's so much understanding who you are, right? And it's not just gender, right? It's not just men, women. It's also like, who, who are you and what are your values? And are you aligning your sales process with that? I think that's really the key. And there's always techniques and things that can help. But I think if we're not in alignment with ourselves, you can feel that across the phone, right? The other person feels that and that can make them say no. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I love that you said that you don't offer your program to people that you don't think are a good fit. And I completely agree with that. I feel like you're in your integrity that way, because if you really care about helping them solve their problem and you realize there's not a problem that you can solve, why would you pitch? You know, um, <laughs> right. And I feel like, but we're taught, we're taught, you know, you go through the script and then you go through the end, and you put price. So we don't think um, in there that are we really serving this person? Plus, you're going to be in a bunch of objection handling for no reason. Like you really Mm -hmm. like help them in the first place. So why do it? Um, And I think that that is for sales reps as well as business owners, because otherwise you might have somebody that comes in that pays and then, you know, they refund later or they don't want to be part of it or they don't get fully everything they wanted out of it because it really wasn't a good fit in the first place, you know, and you getting that win underneath your belt, like did what, you know? Yeah. So I completely with you. Uh, what's next? Like you, you put your hands in a lot of different projects. It sounds like what is your next like passion project that you're focusing on that you want to create that you want to build? Is there anything that you're like excited about right now? Yeah. I mean, I, I took some time off coaching. Like I, I done coaching for, you know, 20 years. So it's a long time to continue to coach. Um, I took, I took like a year, a little bit more off. Uh, and so I've just relaunched my coaching programs and I feel really excited about that project. I'm doing a lot of the somatic coaching, which we've talked about, you know, so there's a lot of shifting of the mind and the body. Um, I do a lot of pattern unraveling. I love digging into like deeply held patterns that we are no longer serving us. Right. And so I like to kind of unravel those. Um, and I do a lot of stress management work as well. I love working with people who are just not operating at their optimal pace. Sometimes that's because they're more introverted or they're empathic or they maybe they have chronic illness. Like there's all these ways in which we are trying to operate at a pace outside of who we are. So I really love all of that. Uh, I'm currently working on a few podcast courses, one in particular, uh, which is about self-compassion, which I think is going to be really powerful. And I'll continue to do my corporate speaking as well. So yeah, it's kind of continuing onward <laughs> what's the pattern thing so can you go into that so pattern unraveling what what is give us an example of like yeah a typical pattern that maybe doesn't serve you would be yeah so like you can take what we might label as self-sabotage i don't love that word self-sabotage but we use it right we we can resonate with it and so we might have sort of this pattern that's sabotaging our relationships or maybe it's sabotaging our sales or it's sabotaging our work and, you know, it's it's something we can see throughout our lives, right? It's not just like it's a one-off or it's just something that, that kind of happens once in a while. It's like there's this deeply held pattern that is stopping us from achieving what we want. Um, and usually those deeply held patterns, right, they're, they're connected to trauma or they're connected to a stress response. They're the way we handle something when we feel a certain way. And so they're sometimes tricky to unravel, uh, but they're really powerful when you're able to see them, become aware of them, unravel them, and then create what I call a new pattern, right? I call it reshaping. But being able to kind of reshape the way we're engaging with something in our lives. Uh, So it's just a really, well, I think it's a really fun process, but (laughs) it can be hard too. Well, yeah, but do you do the same with the corporate speaking or do you talk about something completely different? Because I feel like sometimes when we talk about stuff like this, like sometimes it has to be in a little bit more intimate um, state, you know, so do you do something along the same lines in corporate or do you focus on something different entirely? Uh, I definitely will sometimes label it different, but it is amazing to me, like the corporate environment has really shifted. There is a lot more awareness about trauma and how that's affecting workplaces. There's a lot more awareness about emotional intelligence, the need for it, about empathy, about stress responses. Definitely burnout and stress management is a big topic I work with in all the corporate stuff I do. Uh, So, yeah, you know, I do talk about the same things. You know, I might not label it trauma. I might label it a stress response. Depends on the corporation and their current culture. But, yeah, I mean, this stuff is so important, right? Like, 
you know, just emotional awareness is so important. I mean, I've gone into a few places and done some keynotes on stress management and stress responses and just watching the questions afterwards and watching how engaged everyone is to understand that their emotions are normal, that reactions are normal, that anger is normal, and that, you know, there's so much trying to control themselves when really it's about understanding ourselves. So I think the world's really hungry for these topics. And so that's one of the reasons I love to go into them. Yeah, I agree. I see so many, um, like leadership is a really big thing. Like for me on my side, like I, um, I feel like being a leader is a daily choice, right? And it's not always the funnest thing to do. And part of being a leader is, you know, helping others around you see that you believe in them, right? And that you want the best leader possible and really like focusing out and Sometimes that's not easy to do. Um, but what I do see in leadership a lot is that when people don't have access to this information, they get super frustrated, like with people around them and themselves, because like there's something happening to them they don't understand. They're like, oh, I got angry. And they're like, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, and then they get angry again. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I got angry again. Oh, I'm sorry. And it's this pattern because they don't know how to get rid of it. Right. And mm-hmm. that there's something possibly wrong, you know, with them. Um, and so I, I just wanted to take a minute for anybody that's in the audience is listening to this right now. Um, if you constantly feel like you're in a pattern, right, or you're self-sabotaging or you get angry or frustrated or feel sad and it's constantly coming and you don't know how to, like, get rid of it. So Anya, what can you say to that person that's that's listening to you right now um, besides connecting with you? Um, what could they, you know, do or understand that would help them in this moment? I think the biggest thing that is really important to understand when we're feeling that way is we we want to stop having an adversarial relationship with our stress responses and with our patterns, right? Like understanding that all of our patterns are there to serve us. As humans, we are wired for survival. The body, the unconscious, the autonomic nervous system, it will always, 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 always win. There's nothing we could do in our mind that can overcome what is happening in our bodies and all of it is to serve us. So yes, now that we have a a more mature mind, we might look at something that's happening unconsciously like a pattern and say, ooh, that's self-sabotaging us. But the truth is it was set up to help us survive. And so being able to kind of honor and appreciate ourselves, our patterns, the things we consider self-sabotage, that's actually one of the first steps. Because if we have that kind of conflict with it, if we're always fighting it, if we're shaming it in ourselves, if we're making it wrong, it's going to be really hard to heal and to transform. And so I think that if you could if you could just, you know, shift that, it makes a huge difference. That's one of the reasons why I'm doing the self-compassion podcast course, because I feel like self-compassion is this tool for transformation. And so if we can just do that, it really shifts things. And then, you know, yes, I mean, getting su- further support, especially when you have a deeply seated you know, pattern, I get support when I have a deeply seated pattern, right? Like getting support is really helpful to have a guide, whether that's a therapist or that's a coach or that's, you know, a counselor or someone in your life. I think, you know, that is a good next step as well. Yeah. Loving yourself enough to ask for that support. Sometimes we don't want to. Yes. But it's part of loving yourself. And you don't want to ask like one last thing here, Sonia, because um, I have an 11 year old. I don't know. How, how old are your kids? At 21 and eight. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. So, um, you know, being able to, um, you know, actually that might be me because I, I want a second. So I'll be around, around the same place as you. So yeah. Any- on that point, let me know. But um, one thing that I do see that's hard for me, so I just want to get your perspective on this. When you have all this knowledge, right, and you're a powerful woman, you have all this knowledge, you have all this wisdom, you can help others. When it comes to your child, right, having, you know, some of the things that go on in kids' worlds, bullies at school, or, you know, maybe like struggling with something internally, um, sometimes it's hard for me, you know, to really sit and connect, right, with um, helping them like process whatever's going on, right? Um, which we do a lot. My daughter and I, we do the yelling in pillows and and like punching the pillow and, you yes. know, doing some like just connecting work and just trying to be like present with her. 
for anyone else that is a parent on here that's possibly listening to this too, like, is there anything special that you do with your kids, you know, to help them, you know, um, feel like loved and give them tools that they can use, like on such a, a small level for your eight year old, like that they can use that are actually practical, you know, for a kid? Yeah. I mean, I, I think like just becoming aware of their emotions and making them okay, right? Like that's something we 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 struggle with as adults and struggle with as parents, right? So when our kid is acting out or they're screaming or they're really upset or they're angry or whatever, we oftentimes try to, you know, limit that, you know, in some way or another, even, even with good intention. I think, you know, helping them to just be able to express themselves safely, to, to recognize, hey, we all have emotions, that's okay. And then learning some tools to help them regulate their nervous system, I think is really powerful and key. I mean, you know, there's a lot of little techniques, like one of the things my youngest child does. I mean, my oldest child, she has been steeped in like my work for a long time. So she is very good at regulating herself. She's very good at being aware of her emotions. My youngest eight-year-old, she's d very different. Like she's very extroverted. She's very active. Um, but when, some of the things that work really well for her is, you know, when we go to bed at night, she does what we what she calls the breathing technique. So, you know, what she focuses on is, you know, she focuses on anything in the day that has scared her, anything that's made her feel uncomfortable, anything that's made her sad. And she breathes in and then she breathes out and lets it all go. Right. It's a very simple technique. And every night she breathes in, feels all that stuff, and then she breathes out and lets it go. And that breathing is something that really helps regulate our nervous system, but it clears her mind. And so she has less nightmares, less disturbed sleep. She wakes up feeling more rested in the morning. I found that that is a really powerful, simple tool as a parent um, for my child. No, I think that's brilliant. And we should all as adults do that too, because we're like carry it into the next day and the next day and we're holding on to everything. So yes, I think that's super uh, wise. And I, I honor you, you know, for all the things that you're doing, because you don't have to, right? You don't have to do all this stuff, but you're doing it because, you know, you you want to make a difference in people's lives. And if there's somebody out there that's maybe even listening to this right now, that needed to hear this, that wants to learn from you, wants to grow from you, where should they find you, right? Like if they're wanting to work with you, what would that look like? And I know you said sometimes you don't make on clients and stuff. Um, but, you know, what would that look like and um, where can people find you? Yeah, you can definitely go to my website, sonyastatman.com, and all my podcasts are there. My coaching programs are there um, and my corporate training is there as well. You can also follow me on LinkedIn. I'm not I am on Instagram, but not as active on Instagram, but you can find and connect with me there as well. So those are probably the best places. I mean, email me. Like I said, go to my website. I have lots of places you can connect with me there. Awesome. Is there anything else that you want to, you know, tell anybody that's listening right now? It was such a pleasure meeting you. I just, you I really enjoy uh, your heart. I love authentic, real people. And I didn't know that thing about, you know, you and your early 20s. So I relate to you so much um, and what you've created for yourselves. Like you worked your butt off you know, to get here. And I just, I really honor you because now you're making a difference in other people's lives. And it's just a pleasure, you know, meeting you as well. I don't know if there's anything else you want to say to our audience, to, you know, to just encourage them or be there for them or any insights that you have. I mean, I would just say like, you know, something I'm just always passionate about telling women in particular, everyone, but women in particular, is that you are worthy just by breathing. Mm. There's nothing you need to do. There's nothing you need to become like you are worthy just by breathing. And if we could all really embody that it would be a very different world i i absolutely agree thank you so much for sharing it was such a pleasure happy and i honor you i thank you and uh, i will see you on the next episode ladies bye